Welcome to Grace, Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to the broadcast today. Today we're going to be talking about who and what you are in Christ. It's not just who you are, but what you are. What does God say about you? What exactly. does the blood of Jesus through salvation say about you? What do you have? Who are you? And, and what is God going to do in your life? We need to remember awesome. these things. There's yeah. so much available to us through that. Like, yeah. And, but do you feel like too many people are just struggling and praying and not really taking a hold of what God says they can have and who they 100%. say they are? So many people are standing around going, oh, I screwed up my whole life. I, but I want, you know, you're human. You're going to make mistakes yeah. in life. But that's well, and not who you are. And all the great patriarchs made, like, huge mistakes. And, and look. And you yeah. know, and they're in the hall of faith. Not, not, not every single one. Some of them, to me, they have pretty perfect lives, but they were not perfect, obviously. Yeah. You know. But seriously, I, the whole time you're doing the intro part, I'm just thinking, who are you? You know, who, who? You know, I mean, <laughs> but the, the Christian right. version, the Christian version of who are you? If you knew who you were in Christ, you would have a changed life. Seriously, you if are we, royalty you through are, the blood of this Jesus. You are awesome. Yeah. You, if you, I, I, I mean, seriously, if if you sing the Who song back to yourself and you really think about who you are when you line up what the, mm -hmm. with what the Bible says you are, it's great news. That's why it's called the good news. Because you have an amazing life according to the word. You really do. I always wonder about this. You know, people have no problem believing the enemy's lies like yes. the enemy can spew lies oh your your life is over you've done too much wrong you're worthless you're nothing you're you're just never going to amount to anything all the things that that the negative you know record of the well, day studies, plays in your head studies show that the majority of people throughout the day or their self-talk is negative and i mean i forgot what the statistic was but it's huge but so, why why is that okay why do you have no problem Believing what the enemy says to you, but you have a huge issue believing what God says about you. Exactly. And God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He loves you with an everlasting love apart from him that you can do nothing, that he's got you in the palm of hands and he will never let you go. He will never leave you or forsake you. He says that no weapon formed against you can ever prosper, that he's your redeemer, your advocate, your counselor. He's your all in all. He, he, is, he says that you are more than a conqueror Amen. and that you can do all things through him. Yeah. All things. Do you know what and that means? And he knitted you in your mother's womb. Yes. You were supposed to be here. Even if you were an accident, you weren't an accident to God. You know, God, God wanted doesn't make you mistakes. here for such a time as this. You are strategically placed in the divine timeline of his time. And, and you're, you're a history maker. You're a world changer. I mean, honestly, if you believe what God says about you, it's all good. It, it's, you know what? It, it's about renewing your mind because the Bible says to renew your mind and that you have the in mind Christ of Christ. Jesus. And yes. so when you start to really believe in what God has for you and knowing what the word says about you, you, it's a renewing your mind and resisting the enemy at the onset. And so when you, the minute you start to hear the negative talk come, you combat they go not today say no because god says this god said i can do all things god said he's going to make a way god can bring living waters into the dry wastelands Amen. of my life wherever there's a wasteland wherever there's a desert in your life right now mm -hmm. god can make it rain and yes. you can if you just trust him and know what he has in store for you you know there, no life is perfect, and everybody, everybody makes mistakes. But that's not the place you live in. You don't exactly. go back, and you're not you're not the the sum of your past mistakes. That isn't going to define your life. It, the only way it's going to do that is if you let it by you giving a bigger life to those mistakes than. God says he forgives you as far as the east is from the west. When you exactly. ask for forgiveness, he throws it into the sea of forgetfulness. He but does not. He chooses not to remember, yes, even though he's God. You're giving it a life yeah. that it doesn't need to have. You are not that sum of those mistakes, and it's time for you to believe who God says you are and start walking it out. Mm -hmm. Walk out what he's got for you. Exactly. And, and you, our pastors talked about the, the lion in Honduras 
that was oh, trapped yeah. in the mm -hmm. cage. It, you, you might, since you yeah yeah you know there's there's this little uh key in, off of roatan in honduras it's a little key and they it's like a little beach area and they have a zoo and the people who own this little key uh have gone and rescued animals from circuses and b abused animals and they're they're living in this beautiful sanctuary in this on this island and they're taken care of and there's a lion there charlie and he's got no teeth and his claws are gone and he's all these things and he's in this little cage and they said, you know, you look at this, this lion and he does not know he's a lion. He doesn't know he's That's supposed so to be the king of the jungle and ruler over everything. This lion just cannot even fend for himself. He could never kill anything or eat food or why, any of that. So what does he eat? So they, they have to feed him. He's complete. Like what? Well, they, pureed, I see him. No, I see Pureed meat? He does eat raw chickens. They give him raw. That's what they feed him. Really? But he is in this little cage pacing around and he would never know what to do in the real world because he has never lived his purpose of being the king of the jungle and being because he doesn't know who he is mm -hmm. he, he never has has been able to experience the life he was born to live mm -hmm. and how many people of us are staying in our little cage exactly because but when you see a lion in in we we talked about this earlier we went on a safari nine and i did and we we saw a lion in its natural habitat and it's majestic beautiful it is beautiful mm -hmm. it it knows who who you it, don't who mess he with that is. Lion. you don't mess with the lion exactly uh you might take selfie with it but you don't <laughs> mess with it and i, I we, we we talked about this on our earlier show where we 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 actually were in our little safari mobile and we we took a selfie with the lion in the background he wasn't very very uh, far back but the guy told us he wasn't hungry we believed him maybe we shouldn't have but mm -hmm. anyway he knew who he was right yeah you know i've read other things about circus animals i read about these elephants that um were on chains and the chain you know around their a shackle on their leg and they were chained to something and that when they were set free they would only they were so used to being able to walk in a circle the size of the chain that even when the chain was gone they were so classically conditioned to only be able to go that far that they didn't understand that the chain that they off could their go. foot and don't you that think that, that we're like that yes. you know like it, it so many times parents they they, they kind of maim their children with the words that they speak and i'm really thankful i, I came from an alcoholic family <clears throat> well my father was an alcoholic he died when he was 40 of of alcoholism he was very successful but but he passed away from cirrhosis of the liver and i'm so thankful that he wasn't a typical alcoholic you know he supported his family mm -hmm. but he he spoke life over me in spite of the fact that he seemed to hate himself because he he did not break out of alcoholism he actually died of of uh dts which means he he he, he got he got saved and he stopped but his body shut down and he died mm -hmm. you know but i'm always thankful that you know he made it to heaven but i think about you know here he was in his own prison yet he spoke life over me and i i always thought you know my dad thinks i can do it i can do it you mm -hmm. know he didn't he i my self-talk is usually pretty good because that's my dad saying you're doing you're doing great you know we laugh about that all the time because i grew up with the very opposite <laughs> self-talk you know so we we laugh about that because i grew up with you know you're not going to amount to anything and you can't you know it was very difficult and i did go i always think everything's gonna be great and she's like oh i don't know <laughs> i don't know about that <laughs> but at the end of the day you know it was really when i did get saved and everything changed around i did i did uh live uh, spend a lot of time living with my grandmother and who really did start the process of speaking life speaking life into my life and telling me you can do anything and you're going to go to college and you're going to do and she started deprogramming me basically yeah and that's what you have to do even the bible says your that mind. it says take every thought captive yes. under the knowledge of god which says you are set free you are a king's kid you can do all things through christ yes. who strengthens you mm -hmm. you are more than a conqueror yeah. you you 
change your way of thinking. You know, I, I, I'm, I am grateful because I, I, I am thankful that my earthly father, although he had his flaws, did speak life, and, and I think it, it resonates in my life even today. You know, and so speak life over your children, speak life over your family, speak life to your husband, mm -hmm. your wife, speak life over everyone you know. Even if you're thinking something negative, don't say it like don't, that. Don't give you know? the enemy a foothold. No. Don't give him an opportunity is what that means. And so when you start to declare things like, oh, you know, nothing good ever happens to me. You know, I never get out of debt. I never, I'm bro my child's never going to change. And you start to declare these things. You're giving the enemy an opportunity. You're yes. giving him a foothold over, you're opening a door mm -hmm. for him to have some, some license in that yes. situation. And instead you should be, you know, saying things that aren't as though they are. Speaking Amen. life over that situation. I thank you. Lord, that you're turning this situation around. I thank you, God, that you have my child in the palm of your hands and you won't let them go and you have Amen. a plan for their life and it is for good. You just start declaring the word of God. I thank you that I walk in divine health and I'm delivered and set free. Whatever you're going through, you speak whatever the Bible says over that situation. You start looking up the scriptures over deliverance, over divine health, over... over, yes, uh, over speak those scriptures. Yes. That, they, I can't stress that enough. It is like Declare medicine. for yourself. It really is because it brings your spirit to life. Yes. While you're it's speaking the word of God. Them. Sometimes, you know, like I know whenever I've listened to, I counsel a lot of people because I am in ministry. But sometimes I'm listening to someone and their situation is so dire. And I think when I speak the word, sometimes it sounds little. When I first start saying it, it sounds trite. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just saying, oh, well, and I'm just giving some scripture. But honestly, if we will this take power. the word of God, at it, yeah, we'll take God at his word. There is power in that word. Mm -hmm. there, it, it, by speaking that word, we are wielding the sword of the spirit. Spirit. Yes. We are cutting in there through the enemy. We're getting in the enemy's camp with our best weapon, yes. which is the sword of the spirit. That is the only way to change a situation. And if you are going through a situation right now and you need it to change, change your atmosphere, change your thought life first, change your speech next. Seriously. And then get your feet moving. Yes. You know, it's like just, it, the Bible talks about idle hands. Mm -hmm. And if you're sitting around doing nothing, you're you're letting the enemy use your mind as a playground. Yes. Because if you're idle and you're not busy, get about doing the things of the Lord. Amen. And even if you have to go volunteer, go do something because the enemy loves and when you're an idol, you sit there. He likes to, to get you alone. Yes. Get you away from people, get you where you're just going to be feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, the enemy can throw the best pity parties and you're the only one invited. Well, and he likes to just sit down there and tell you all the things you're not and all the things that you screwed up and did wrong and how, yes. he, and, and so you get up, you get yourself busy doing the things of God. And if you don't know what that is, you try something. Yes. You just try something that day and then the next day and the next day and you just keep moving because I guarantee you through that, God will open a door for you because <clears throat> you're stepping out in faith and you're trusting him and he knows who you are. His thoughts for you outnumber the grains of sand. Amen. He's got a plan for your life that, that no one can take away from you except you by exactly. believing the enemy's lies. And, and, and you know, he does try, the devil wants to isolate you. That's the bottom line. 100%. And, and going back to the, you know, w when we were in Africa, we went on safari. We also went on a hot air balloon. That is a whole different story. It was like, get me out of here at first. And then I started thinking, I, I, I better get back in here. I don't know anybody on the ground. And we're going to sail several miles away. And <laughs> yeah. she's going to just be standing there. So. so I said, can I get back in there? So by that point, they had picked the, the basket up. And as soon as we get in the basket and we start floating upwards, even though the fire, you can feel the heat, uh, the, the pilot, they call them pilots, the pilot said, well, one time a cobra jumped up almost in the basket. I'm thinking, I'm going to jump back out of here. If a cobra... I was like, really? A cobra he had jumped? to say that right then. She if, just got back in. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I say all that to say we're, you know, looking up here and we're watching what's happening, you know, 
on the safari and all these wild animals, all these wildebeest, we, we went during the migration of the wildebeest, which was awesome. And let me just say, the lion is a predator. Yes. And he's looking for the one animal that is all by itself. Yes. And and I'm I'm pulling for him from our balloon, mm -hmm. you know, and trying to forget about the cobra story. I'm trying to enjoy the safari. And and so the you're watching this little animal all by itself. It it gets away from the herd and and then that lion will jump on it, you know? And and so you need to Get with other believers who yes. believe that your situation is not impossible and that that y you are, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling together yes. as some are in the habit of doing. You need to assemble with other believers because you need the strength of not being all by yourself, not being isolated. So because once you get isolated, the, the enemy of your soul wants to pounce. Because the Bible says to bear one another's burdens. Yes. And so, and it says, when two or more gather, Together, two can send 10,000 to flight. One you will get, send 1,000 and two 10,000. You get somebody that's going to believe with you for your situation to turn around because that's what the Word of God says and that you have somebody that's going to stand with you in that. Get somebody who's going to help you be accountable to something that you're trying to overcome and that you be an accountability partner and that you know that, that you know, you're not going down. We're going to do everything we know to do to get this thing, everything the Bible says to do. Be accountable. Have an accountability. And, and Pray with exactly. someone else. Get someone who's going to believe and stand with you. Cast your care or, or confess your sins to one another and then bear one another's burdens. And then cast your cares onto Jesus. Trust that he's got a plan for you and he's going to bring you Amen. through that situation. But you need to know who you are and that these things are available to you because if you're going to sit around forevermore believing that one mistake you know, blew your whole life, or if you're going to believe that old broken record that played since your childhood that you're never going to amount to anything, why are you going to believe the enemy's lies? You get in the Word and you start believing what that says about you, what God yes. has written about you, what his thoughts are of you. And that you, it says, take every thought captive and trust that God's thoughts, his thoughts outnumber, like again, the grains of sand. Pick up a handful of sand. Just think about how many grains are in that alone, let alone all the beaches and all the world. You know, if you just would go from there and start turning your life around by saying what God has said about you and what you get, he, your steps are ordered. Your mm -hmm. steps are ordered of the Lord. And I know, you know that... Um, you know that one lady that, that we were praying for that one time that was going to marry somebody? Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, we, we, we had a friend, and, and she was asking us, you know, what we thought of her fiancé, and we both had no peace at all about him. And We never met him, and when we no. saw him, separate of each other. When I saw him, I, I, I felt like the Lord told me something about him, and then you, you felt, I felt the, the same, same way. But, you know... She already had the wedding all planned, and she had her family flying in, and I mean, it was it was a big deal. You know, it was no little thing to change. I mean, she planned to marry this man, and she loved him. And we, uh, you know, we were praying. I was asking the Lord. I said, God, if you want her to know how we feel, then have her call me and ask me specifically. And she did. When I saw her number, I was like, oh, no, here we go. I'm going to I'm gonna lose a friend. That's what I was thinking. And I really did not know her at yeah, all. Yeah, at, at the, the time, time, you do now. And, and so, and now I know her, but I didn't at the time. And, and um, so, again, I did not know her situation or anything. And so you said, um, you told her to call me. Yeah. And so I started telling her what I felt like the Lord was saying. And she was quiet on the phone. And I said, you already know this. This yeah. is just confirming for you. And I said, and my point of saying this is that she had been through a very, very difficult divorce, that, that she was very insecure in her life because of that. She had some, and so she was really settling because of her negative self-talk because she wasn't really receiving who she was and that mm -hmm. she wasn't going to wait for God's best for her. And so when I was able to tell her all of those things, then and, and, and she just knew, she knew it was like resonating in her spirit that those things were true. And we fast forwarded, uh, she called off the wedding. It was, she was getting married in three weeks. Yeah, she did. And, and I but saw But she her, already knew. So, yeah. you know, God's not going to come 
to you with someone saying something like that and not tell you first. You're right. his child. It was so when yeah. I when I started telling her, I said, "Wait a minute, you already know all this." And she knew I did not know her, and I did mm -hmm. not know the situation. And so then when I saw her about a year later. Um, she said to me, every sing single thing you, you said happened. Yeah. That happened that way. That's what he did. He, she did not marry him, but he, he, she found out all these other things about him in, in the process of breaking up with him. Mm -hmm. And she said that all happened. And so uh, at the end of the day, when we start um, falling in, falling victim to the lies that the enemy tries to tell us about ourselves, we start believing that we are less than and we are lucky to have somebody, even yes. if they're not treating us well. And we start falling into the victim of this is the only thing I can do because I'm not qualified and so for anything else. so many people else. are married to, the, to, you know, people that probably wasn't God's will. Or, or they're in an abusive situation, yeah. but they don't feel, they feel deserving of it or that they're never going to be able to get out of it or have a better life. I mean, life. God can fix it. Once you, I feel like once you're married, you know, unless they're being abusive or whatever, it's a covenant and God can, you know, turn things around and bless your marriage and God will work it out, you know. But the issue is if you're dating someone and you can still stop beforehand, do it because it'll save you a lot of grief, right? It can. It can save you a lot of grief. And that's the thing about anything. Like when you start believing the lies that the enemy uh, spews about you, then you don't think you're deserving of God's best for you in any area, whether it's a job, you'll say you're disqualified, you can't, don't have enough qualifications for that job, you can't do it. When you start to believe the negative talk of the enemy over what God, who you are in Christ and what God says you can have in Christ, then you're going to, your life is going to go the way that you have spoken over it as the mind thinks the man follows. Mm -hmm. So if you believe all these uh, small minded this and you believe that you you're not going to amount to anything and you're never going to have anything you're going to attract what you put out there exactly. you're going to bring the the people who are negative that are in your life you're going to believe that that that's the as good as it gets or that's all i deserve because i'm such a bad person or i could never get the right job no god can cause you to be at the right place at the right time and cause you to get great Amen. breaks and breakthroughs. He can, he has somebody already set aside that is a wonderful Christian spouse for you that he already knows their name. He knows your address. He has such a good plan for your life. He does. And you need to live on purpose for that and start yes. declaring that and start your feet walking towards that. Start speaking that. And when the enemy comes to try to tell you, why are you going on that job interview? You're never going to get it. All yeah. these people have. You come against that with the word of God. God is qualifying me. Because I come with Jesus and, and he plus me together, we can do anything. Because I can do all things through him. And I don't, you know, you you combat that. You know, when he tells you your life's over, that you're never going to find the right person. You start saying, I thank you, Lord, that you have Amen. a wonderful spouse for me. That's going to be my love of my life forevermore. Yes. You combat <laughs> the word of God or the word of the enemy with what the word of God says about you. Amen. And I promise your life will start to shift in that direction exactly. of that because God is not a God who should lie and his plan for you stands. And it is so awesome. The plan he has for you that he is the author and the finisher. He who began a good work in your life is going to finish it until the day of completion. And God wants to complete a good and powerful and mighty work in your life. If you just step out in faith and decide that that's the life you're going to live, no matter what the enemy tries to do or say. Amen. You live on purpose. For Amen. And, and God wants to do a great work in your life. And, you know, if you're, if you're struggling with your faith, the Bible says that, you know, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And so... Get around people who have a testimony. Mm -hmm. You know, listen to testimonies on the internet of, of of people who have been through something and have and God has broken through for them. And you know, there are so many testimonies of miracles of what God can do and what He has done. Mm -hmm. Amazing testimonies, miracles yeah. that you know of people who were in wrecks and and they saw heaven and. God, you know, pulled them out of, of where they were. They remember seeing angels and all these things. These, these are all accessible to you. Mm -hmm. The Bible says God is no respecter of persons. Yes. What he does for them, he will do for you. Anything he's done for us, he will do for you. We're not special. 
in we're any way. We're not special. You know, God, we're special to God because we're His. But barring that, you know, we're no different than anybody else. So what He has done for us, any testimony that we have, take it for yourself. You can have it too. Seriously. Amen. We have seen God do so many things. We mm -hmm. have seen Him heal people. We have seen Him uh, change lives. We have seen people get completely uh, delivered and Amen. saved and set free. We have seen God just work and do so many things. And, and you know, we've seen the power that comes from speaking the Word of God. And when you start declaring, when you change your mind, just change your mind. Change your mind because God doesn't change his. And so yes. when you get your mind lined up with what God has in store for you, you're going to have such a blessed life. Amen. I mean, things aren't going to always be perfect, but you're going to be on the right path. And when you're on God's path, there's nothing better. Amen. No matter what, no matter what day, like I always say that, you know, no matter what kind of bad day I have, my worst day with mm -hmm. Christ is so much better than my best day ever was without him. Amen. Amen. And we want to pray with you that God is going to let your thought life, your, your, it just everything in your life line up. Let the, the, who God says about you change who you are. So Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for every stronghold of thinking to, to just stand right now. It has to fall under the name of Jesus. Yes. The, the, your word says that the name of Jesus is high and lifted up above everything, above every stronghold of thinking. And so we ask you in the name of Jesus that you would touch each and every person's thought life and, and, and how they act and what they say, Father, and that, that they would have a turnaround even this day mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You know, the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, that God will raise a standard against him. Amen. So just know that you have that available to you, that God will raise a standard. So when you start, you know, speaking and combating what the enemy's saying with the word of God, that standard will show up and come against that enemy. And he has to flee at the name of Jesus. So Amen. we just want to thank you guys for, for watching the program today. And we, we just invite you to head on over to NinaAndMichelle.com and leave us your prayer requests. You can read our devotions. You can see what we're up to. And you can watch uh, past episodes. We just love you guys. And we're so happy that you joined us. God yes. bless you. God bless you. We love you. Thank you.